Being kind and lazy is more threatening. Today, someone will be delivered under the title "Being kind and lazy is more threatening." Today we explore the workings of God for his governance of the Galatian church. In strict terms, because Galatian is a region, there is no such term as a church of Galatians. However, as widely accepted, we'll use the term Galatian church today. Uh, Galatian churches were dominated by legalists uh, preaching salvation for strict adherence to Halle rituals and workings of the law. In fact, God, the book of Galatians was written in response to these earthly temptations. Therefore, through these teachings, we are able to highlight the fundamentals of regional faith, serving as a motto for religious reformation. Only through faith there is salvation, justification by faith. Justification by faith was most clearly expressed through the words of God towards Galatian churches. Justification by faith, a principle denoting righteousness and justification can only be obtained through faith. However, as for the question of salvation, the Holy Spirit plays a vital role. Therefore, through the Galatian church, we are able to identify the close relationship between faith and the Spirit. In order to clarify our understanding of this relationship, I would like to set a hypothetical model. Let's presume there's an average believer. He has personally experienced God's blessing through worship. He has experienced God's blessing on multiple occasions and he has accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. In short, this believer has experienced both God's blessing and the working of the Holy Spirit. So this person is people like you who worship God through morning prayers. However, through this hypothetical average believer, I would like to explore how the Holy Spirit works in us. First, we must ask what led us to experience the workings of the Holy Spirit. We know that the believers of the Galatian church all experience the working of the Holy Spirit and God's mercy. However, God is asking, who supplies the Holy Spirit? What helped you to experience the workings of the Holy Spirit and God's mercy? We use the word debate to denote discussions among believers. However, the comments and critics made by the non-believers, people who have, no, who have not experienced the workings of the Holy Spirit and God's mercy, is a direct attack and threat to Christianity. The words by anti-believers can never become a debate. There are, there are only an attack or an evil threat. This is because we share a different perception and vision of the world. However, we do say, share some fundamental similarities. They experience God's blessing by accepting Jesus Christ as my Savior. And then he is asking these questions to believers who have experienced the working of the Holy Spirit, who supplies the Holy Spirit working in your daily life. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 2, it says, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive His Spirit and work? miracles among you by the words of law or by your believing what you heard. Here he is asking one simple main question, where is the source of the Spirit works rooted? Is it the works of law by faith? The answer is straightforward. It is not through the works of law, but because they listen and believe what they heard. This is true for everyone here today at this morning prayer. Are you here because you have all experienced God's blessing, right? Everyone here today, are you here because of the works of the law? No, right? The reason you are here is because you have all heard and believed, and that's why you're here. Many believers experience the Holy Spirit through worship services. They feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, therefore our sins are replenished, we repent, our hearts start to light up, and we experience changes, and we encounter a new spiritual experience before God. However, what God is asking is where do you think these changes and experiences stem from? Did these spiritual changes come from the works of law? What are these legalists really saying? Did these miracles come from emphasizing morality, justice, or human action? No, the only reason why we have experienced miracles is because we have heard the preachings of the Gospels of the Cross and believed. Therefore, we should not be fooled and be deceived. So let's refer to chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galateans, the word foolish is rooted in the word anatos, referring to a person who can think but fails to use their power of perception. Also in verse 3, it repeats the word amatos by saying, are you so foolish? Foolish, foolish, foolish. What is it telling us? It's asking, what are you doing with your brain? In other words, in order to escape from the confusion and become victorious, all we have to do is think. Think, it's telling us to think. Think how you are 
how you have come so far? Is it really because of the works of the law? No. When did we become so loyal to morality, justice, and action? Did they bring you this far? No. You have come so far because you listened to the gospel of the cross and believed upon the works of the Holy Spirit. In other words, God is providing us with the important message. The only reason why we have come so far and become who we are is because we listen and believe. Therefore, I sincerely hope everyone to accept that we are here today because we have listened and believed in the words of God. Next, the second phase of our discussion. In order to under understand this process, let's think of our current situation. Our soul has been blessed with eternal life from death then there must be some accomplishments. Although it may vary slightly from person to person, I believe everyone has achieved 90% in their life. Even churches relying on the Holy Spirit achieve 90%. However, because we are all humans and because we have yet to enjoy absolute glory, there are bound to be people within the 10% range causing all kinds of trouble. There is no church on earth that is perfect. Even 90% is good, 10% will be filled with problems. Also, there is no believer who is perfect. Although Although 90% have been satisfied through Jesus Christ, there is still problems within the 10% range. Then, how was this 90% satisfied in the first place? Isn't it through God's blessing? Therefore, if there is shortcomings or if something is insufficient, then how was this 90% satisfied in the first place? Isn't it through God's blessing? Therefore, if there is a shortcoming, shouldn't we be relying more on God's blessing? But it is here where the wicked works of legalists penetrate into our lives, bringing confusion and temptation. What these legalists of, often do is focus on this 10%, diverting your attention away from the 90% accomplishment. They do not have any power to, to heal or give life because they are fakes. These people are not here to evangelize non-believers. In fact, they are here to make believers when 90% of their lives have been accomplished to fall. That's why they focus on the 10% problem and continue to bewitch us. So, when do we use the word bewitch? It is used to describe evils. In chapter 1 verse 6, it says turning to a different gospel, and in verse 7, which is really not gospel at all, in short, it clouds the gospel and becomes unbiblical. Do you know what kind of strategy these people enjoy? It is true that 90% has been already satisfied. However, these people question the existing church and the faith of believers and often engage in the following argument. They claim that these accomplishments and satisfaction can easily be obtained. Furthermore, they even claim that they can be accomplished or satisfied naturally. Happen naturally? Is there anything in life that can be obtained naturally without the workings of the Holy Spirit? Can construction and production be accomplished naturally? If we were to leave anything in our life untouched, it will fall into complete destruction and desolation. They are satisfied through the works of something. Don't we have life because of the works of something or someone? However, these legalists claim that they can be achieved by anyone or even be satisfied naturally. Then, let us have a look at the lives of these people. These people have accomplished nothing in their life. Why? Because they are all fakes. Fakes do not have the ability to build or give new life. Furthermore, they claim these accomplishments happen naturally. Do you know what makes me feel most pitiful? It is witnessing people who have themselves never have personally healed or given life to people, leading students of religion in life-saving movements. They claim they can lead revolutionary movement, but I think this is a big joke. Just tell them to mind their own business. Why? Because they are all fakes. They have no ability to save lives. These people are spiritual parasites. Why? Because they only feed on those who have already accomplished 90%. They have no power over things that had yet to be accomplished. Why? Because they have no power of life and they are all fakes. Therefore, they simply approach people who have already accomplished, who are most often full, and tell them that there is a way to resolve the unanswered 10% problem. Their solution is the work of law. Law. They are the... Uh, Pharisees, legalists, it has been accomplished and the remaining 10% can be resolved with the works of law. In modern terms, they believe justice can resolve our problems, morality can resolve our problems, and actions can resolve our problems. However, do you know when we use the word foolish people, it refers to people with immature and childlike faith. The argument of legalists appeal to these spiritually immature people. Why are they appealing? Do they appeal to the universal morality. 
So why is appealing to the morality so evil? Because only God is the completion of morality. When we listen to the stories of this completeness, they become appealing. Reference to religion and faith is appealing. However, what do these legalists tell us about appealing this completeness? They say it's possible through the works of law. This is where they are wrong. How can we achieve this? It is only possible through the cross. It should be through God's blessing, but they appeal to the works of law. This is why I believe they are the true evils. They are the most wicked people in society. We have all heard the phrase of wicked and lazy, and Jesus used the phrase of wicked and lazy servant. What I have noticed is that the wicked and lazy persons pose no serious threat. Why? Because they are wicked and lazy, people will point fingers at them. Therefore, they become less appealing. Here, the word lazy refers to people preaching unbiblical messages and beliefs. So, if a wicked and lazy person delivers wrong ideas, it is not threatening because no one will listen to his words. Why should we listen to the words of the foolish? However, what is most threatening is the kind and lazy. These kind of lazy people are kind but spread the wrong and unbiblical messages. They are the legalists. Therefore, the kind and lazy are far more threatening than the wicked and the lazy. Do you know how the kind and the lazy represent themselves? They are represented by respect. They are respected. They have justification. Do you know when these people smile, they exhibit benevolence, and most of them are good looking as well. They are a joy to see, but sadly, they shout unbiblical and wrong messages. Therefore, they are evil. They are the most evil kind of people on earth. Do you know what these people emphasize? Although salvation and complete, uh, completeness can be obtained through the cross, Jesus Christ, blessing and forgiveness, these people deny the power of the cross. So if we look at the latter part of chapter 2, verse 21, it says, If righteousness can be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. In other words, if you deny the cross, what did Jesus Christ die for? They reject the cross and make Jesus Christ die for nothing. They fail to talk about righteousness and blessing. All they talk about is justice. They don't talk about forgiveness. They tell us to accomplish something. What is this? These are the kind and lazy people. They are the enemy of the cross, the enemy of the cross. What does the Bible say about these people? According to Galatians chapter 5 verse 9, they are little yeast. Little yeast work through the whole batch of the dough. In other parts of the Bible, the evil appears in the form of an angel. These devils appear as angels. In chapter 1, it says, even if an angel from heaven, and repeated in verse 7 and 8, in verse 8, it says, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. Furthermore, in chapter 5 verse 10, it says, one who is throwing you into confusion, and in chapter 5 verse 12, as though agitated, and which they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. So what are these legalists all about? They challenge you with the unanswered 10% of the problem. They discard the 90% which have been accomplished and claim that adherence to the works of law will fulfill the unanswered 10%. They claim justice, morality and actions can bring completeness. This is the enemy of the cross. They do not rely on the Holy Spirit. They reject the cross. Therefore, what does the Bible tell us? Would you want to be born from the Spirit and die as a flesh? How foolish can you get? The more you lack, the more you should rely on the cross. The more you should rely on the Bible, the more you should rely on Jesus Christ. Why don't you know that this can only bring victory, you foolish people? Do you really want to be born through the Holy Spirit and die as a flesh? Many believers, believers blessed with 90% accomplishment, know what blessing is because they have experienced it. They know what blessing is. They remember what blessing is. They know what glory of worship is. They know through memory because they experience inspiration from the presence of the Holy Spirit. They know through me memory. However, these foolish idiots are deceived by legalism and claim that completeness can be achieved through the works of law. Although they feel discomfort, desolation, cold and thirst, and why can't they realize that the works of law is not the answer? Why do these foolish people realize their simple truth? They do not know where the problem to the problem is. The question, why do I feel desolate when I receive blessing in the past? Why do I feel so cold when the Holy Spirit presided over me in the past? Why do I feel so thirsty when there was uh, satisfaction in the past? These foolish people do not know why. You are foolish. 
What did we say about the foolish? They are those who does not know how to think. They fail to think. What is the cause of this inability? It is because they belong to the works of law and preaching of the legalist. They must return to the Holy Spirit. They must return to the cross. They must return to the blessing. They must return to the gospel for forgiveness. But these foolish people have left from this life. I would like to make this crystal clear to you. The Bible is clearly telling us that it wants to emasculate the agitators. We should not remain within the preaching of the legalists. We must leave at once. Why? They are the source of the real evil. They are more evil than a religious cult and a numinon of the devil. They are threatening because they are fake, but seem real and genuine. We know who are evil and lazy. Everyone knows that evil and lazy are bad people. However, it is the kind and the lazy whom are most threatening. Therefore, we must have the ability to identify these kind of lazy people. They are kind but lazy. They are kind but fakes. They look like an angel from heaven but fakes. They are morally, morally superior but fakes. They have, the, they have justification but fakes. They do not preach the cross. These people preach something completely wrong. Therefore, we must have discernment. Especially, we must ask God for his guidance in helping us to discern the kind and lazy. We must get rid of all kind and lazy people. Only then are we able to witness a spiritual revival experienced by the Galatian Church. Only then are we able to witness a spiritual revival experienced by the Galatian Church through the works of the Holy Spirit. Do you know who acknowledged this in modern context? Martin Luther. Do you know what religious reformation represents? Do you know who are the kind and lazy? The kind and lazy do not expose their hypocrisy. Religious reformation is returning to the cross in the Bible. Then what confession should be made? We find the answer in Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified. Now do you understand? Do you get it? We should have no other boast except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been sacrificed. As a bonus, I would like to provide you with one final message, the future. If you have yet to understand, please listen carefully. Just think what lies ahead of you when you follow a certain preaching or an argument. What kind of fruit does the preaching of the legalists produce? According to Galatians chapter 5 verse 9, the acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery. Also, what is found in all relationships, enemies, conflict, jealousy, anger, separation and cults? Therefore, do you know what happens when you adhere to the works of law? You make new enemies, raise conflicts, jealousy and separation. Also, when the devil under the mask of an angel penetrates into a church, it results in division and separation. It completely destroys the church. People fight, there is separation. And do you know why? It is simple, because they are fakes rejecting the cross. They reject the inherent human sins. We know that we are all sinners. We are sinners, but they act as if they are the only non-sinners. We must not be deceived. If you are still unclear, just believe these people are fakes. There is no need for analysis nor thoughts. They are fakes. Why? Because when you listen to them, there is conflict and you make new enemies. They are fakes. So what are fakes? What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? In chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. When you listen to the message, it brings love. When you listen to the message, you feel joy. When you listen to the message, you feel peace. It's coming down from heaven. When you listen to the message, you have the power to forbear. When you listen to the message, you have kindness. When you listen to the message, you feel goodness. And when you listen to the message, you feel warmth, mercy, moderation, and loyalty. Now, do you get it? These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it obvious by looking at yourself how you changed after listening to the message? Look at the result. The Holy Spirit works through three different spectrums, the past, present, and the future. The Holy Spirit helps us discern the faith through the works of the Holy Spirit. Now, the conclusion of today's summons. We are all avid Christians. We have experienced God's blessing and the works of the Holy Spirit. How can we discern fakes? How did we come this far and become who we are today? Was it for morality, justice, or action? No, right? It was because we listened and believed. Isn't it because we listened to the gospel of the cross and believed? So do not be deceived. We are here because we listened and believed. However, we are still lacking, right? This is part of life. We all lack something. 
and will not be complete until we experience baptism and eternal life. 90% of our life has been satisfied, but 10% will always be lacking. It is here, in the midst of incompleteness, where the evil spirit of the legalists will penetrate. They claim morality, justice, and action can bring full satisfaction. They are the true evils. Well, why can't you see that they are wrong? We must therefore rely more on God, act according to the works of the Holy Spirit, listen to the Gospels of the Cross, and mature through, the, through and along with Jesus Christ, our only Savior. You all agree with this, right? So just continue walking down the path you have already followed. However, if this doesn't work, look at the future. What kind of fruit did you bear in your life? Do you feel anger? Frustration? Then he's a fake. He's a fake. Now do you understand? This is a touchstone of our ability. The Holy Spirit will be the litmus paper in our life. In today's world, a world of confusion, when the devil under the mask of an angel tries to penetrate our lives, when the kind and lazy servant will try to confuse us, the only answer to become victorious is relying in the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I ask in God's name that we all can become a servant of faith, being victorious and overcoming the evil temptation through the preaching of the right message and relying on the gospel of the cross and bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray now. Now, let us rely on these words and wholeheartedly pray in front of our Lord. Our Lord, the only reason why I've come so far is because I listened and believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, please guide us not into temptation, but help us to rely solely on the power of the Holy Spirit, helping us to become victorious over the resistant temptation of the evil spirit during every moment and step of our lives.